<laughs> Behind the headlines, remembering women's accomplishments. Every year since 1987, Congress has approved a resolution designating March as Women's History Month. But how well is society doing at celebrating women's achievements? Not that well, according to one women's historian. It's mostly celebrated in schools. You do not see a lot of attention about Women's History Month in the media. And if you ask the men or women in the street, they would not know and they might you know, make a joke about it. But it creates an opportunity and raises awareness for the public about women leaders who made lots of sacrifices for women today. Beverly Wettenstein maintains a database of women's accomplishments and says sparse recognition of women in the public sphere is producing a generation of uninformed young people. They just don't realize it because it's not recorded. I say there are three R's to women's history. Recording, reporting, and remembering. With all the attention for Clinton and Palin, there was hardly any mention or no mention of Shirley Chisholm, who was the first black woman elected to Congress and the first black person of a majority party to run for president. And Margaret Chase Smith was the first woman at the Republican National Convention in 1964, and there was no mention. So there's no historical perspective. In fact, in a study the year before the 2008 campaign, one in four children thought it was illegal for women and minorities to run for president. Communications professor Dr. Nicola Gutgold says it's important for young women to know their history because it shapes their own dreams and goals. I think the more strong female examples they see, the more they can truly picture themselves. I'm working on a book about Hillary Clinton's presidential bid, and sometimes colleagues will say to me, oh, too bad about Hillary Clinton, and I want to quickly correct them and say, I don't understand why we're uh, empathizing with her. She's Secretary of State. She won more votes than any woman ever won for the presidency, and she almost became president. And I think that our, our girls uh, should read about her in history books, just as they should read about Al Gore in 2000. It was a, a history, a history-making campaign. It was an, a, a, an important moment in electoral politics. Gutgold also thinks society has developed the bad habit of only recognizing women's firsts. And being first is freighted with other issues, especially in the world of politics. I think that label first is a burden um, for a candidate because it immediately points to the novelty of their candidacy. So I do think that while it's, it is worth noting um, I've received some criticism for my scholarship for that reason, that you're accentuating the very thing you're trying to uh, minimize, that women are equal. And I, I accept that, but language has some limitations. And one of them is that there are a few ways to describe what is indeed a first. Uh, but it will get old. It is already getting old, which is a good thing. And I think Hillary Clinton helped make it old. Wettenstein says firsts never get old and thinks for too long we have been overlooking female firsts without even knowing it. When I speak around the country to young women, they don't relate and they don't appreciate because they aren't aware of the women who fought for the rights that they enjoy because they got the new rights without the old fights. The important issue is that a lot of it was the result of legislation. And I think that's where they have to realize, even if they might not like politics, that legislation determines a lot of what happens in their life and has an impact. And so they might get more involved in the political process and elections, and certainly to vote in all the elections. So do we pay too much attention to first Genevieve Wood and not to women's great accomplishments that may not have been, if they've not been the first to do something? Well, I, I don't know. I think it's a tough question. I mean, I, I was thinking about this of what she was just saying at the end about, you know, that you kind of have a generation now that takes for granted a lot of things. And I, you know, I'm, I myself have even been in that role. I've heard other women, you know, when I first started out in the job uh, in the career world, and I would say something, you know, just kind of take things in my they thought for granted that you don't understand like you know 10 years ago a woman wouldn't have this job and so forth but at the same time i kind of think isn't that in some ways what we want 
you kind of want it that, that girls today don't grow up thinking like, I've got to be the first to do this. It's just, no, I've got the opportunity to do this. So it's kind of the catch-22. You, you I'm a big believer in knowing history and knowing from where you came and knowing the trials that people have gone through. But at the same time, there's a tendency at times, and I think, frankly, from older feminists, to kind of want to keep pushing it out there. And it, it just I think it rubs the wrong way sometimes. Oh, goodness. I, 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 I think the firsts have an extraordinary uh, influence because they have an outsized influence and people think, oh my lord, does that mean I can do that too? And thereafter, the influence may be, be, be a little less. I, I do think it, there's something very, uh, there's, there's some osmosis happening here. There is the notion, it seems to me, that once the breakthrough, the initial breakthrough uh, has occurred, uh, people, those breakthroughs in and of themselves, by their very nature and person, educate the general public about the importance of, of diversity of everybody. Well, uh, what does in fact this extraordinary achievement of Barack Obama as the first African American president tell you anything about Shirley Chisholm? Wouldn't you want to know as an educated American about that, unfortunately? We do need these months and weeks mm. to do but, it. You know and they started during the movements, you will notice. Then you got these black studies and these women's studies. And, and then everybody said, well, let's really integrate them with, with everything else, which is what we should do. But the only way to get them integrated is to keep having these weeks so that we, or months, so that we keep impressing people with the importance of understanding what, how marvelous it is that all of these women, not just one of these women, are coming forward and being being in places where they weren't before. But you know, historians will tell you that history is written by the winners. And so it colors the kind of history we get. And if you have a month, you have a problem. You were not written into the history because you were not one of the winners. The winners are white men. And so we've got Black History Month, we've got uh, Women's History Month. and. Now, though, we have some winners. We have Barack Obama. We have Hillary Clinton. And if you remember when Hillary captivated the world at, in Denver at the convention, she talked about Harriet Tubman. She did just what Beverly suggested women who are now winners and making it need to do. She hearkened back to another woman in history and said, she had what I've got. You know, this has always been there. You're just recognizing it now because I'm a winner. I shouldn't win the election, but she's clearly a winner. Well, I think it's important that we know our history, and every, the world needs leaders, and it's in, I think firsts are important. But during the segment, during the package, I thought it was interesting that she mentioned that some, the first fatigue sometimes takes away from what we are ultimately trying to achieve, which is based on what your achievements are, not the fact that you're a woman. It shouldn't be, there should be no distinctions just because you're a woman, so now that makes it, you know, better or, or not. And, so that is a tough dichotomy. To well, how do, how do the news media resolve this? Suggestions? Because, okay, so you celebrate the first, but you ignore the second. Right. And maybe she or he, whatever the achievement is, uh, had trials and tribulations too, and kids need to keep yeah, knowing but, about but there's that. a difference between I think, celebrating and trying to always make a political yes. statement or use it to push some new right. cause. I mean, I, I was thinking, and we've, we're, we've been in Black History Month, and I was looking up at the TV of the day, and they talked about this was the first time, and I forgot which airline it was, but two women uh, and, who were both black flew the airline. They were both the captains yes. or whatever. And I looked at that, I didn't even think about it. I thought, well, wow, that's kind of cool to know. I'd never thought about that wouldn't have happened, but now that I know that's kind of, but that was a feel-good moment. It wasn't pushing anything. Gotcha. 